Oh my god, she's so cute. I just want to hug her, but that would be super inappropriate. Correct answer. You seem a strong, strapping kind of person. Well, a uh, strong person, at least. <laughs> well, you're your person that. That's enough. Um, semi insulted then? What the, what the fuck? <laughs> Seriously, what the fuck? Why do we have a mascot? And why do we have a mascot? And why are your eyes on the side? And why is any of this happening? Why? Yeah. Yeah. Hey everyone, it's your boy Connor. Today we're continuing a Kate Spirits. Last time our cute roommate made us download an app with an AI girl that promised to find us the love of our lives and our dream job. After answering some weird questions, we got the job! Yay! Now, will we find love and will the job suck? We'll see. Any minute now, what an engaging job. Mmm, I crave the sweet embrace of death. I've been sitting here for two hours now and nobody's walked up to obtain a novelty funplex shot glass or a colored pencil set or a light up yo-yo. Lunchtime's approaching and so far the only people walking in and out of the arcade are a few stray adults with no interest in cheap friendship bracelets. Thankfully, my first customer of the day arrives before I start wondering if one of those 500 ticket plushies could really fit down someone's throat. Or maybe not. Nope. Just walking right on by me, his head buried in reading some sort of spreadsheet of his tablet. Was he here to play? Doesn't, doesn't seem like the typical businessman on break or unwashed and unemployed game aficionado. In fact, he's a snappy dresser, seems a cool dude. Wow, he seems pretty stuck up. Damn, he's hot, that's my kind of guy. Um, seems cool? Most guys I know are content to toss on a t-shirt and jeans, not this guy. Even in arcade, he's sharp like a linoleum knife. Okay. In fact, that rather pointed look he's offering me after doubling back is rather linoleum knifey too. Hold on a minute. Who are you exactly? What are you doing behind the desk? Where's Francine? Pleased to meet you, I'm Connor. I am Francine. Had some work done. And a new hire. Not that anybody wants prices. Um, pleased to meet you, I'm Connor. I'm just hanging out here. Hello, I'm Connor Catpuccino. New hire here. I'm looking forward to working with you. He relaxes somewhat on hearing that. Somewhat. Good to hear. It's about time. I was wondering how long she'd have to work on the desk. She's got gusto for an octogenarian. I don't know what that means. And loves working the floor, but sitting here all day, handing out toys and dealing with problems wears her down. So she's explained the job to you? Gave you the papers to sign? She said Gavin would handle the stuff and you're probably Gavin. Usai he rubs his forehead, feeling a headache coming in. <sighs> that would be me. I'm Gavin Cooper. Hi. I'm the business manager here at the Funplex. I make sure you manage to keep having a business rather than a pile of rapidly collapsing fiscal mistakes. Right, so, as you've no doubt guessed, you'll be exchanging tickets for prices. But that's the least part of your job. There's more to it than that. You're the floor attendant. You attend to the floor. But the carpets? Seriously? <sighs> the floor, the arcade, the games, the patrons. You're the one running around, putting out fires and sorting out problems. Technically, you're a second floor attendant. Ashley will be in later, but we need two. One to roam, one to operate the desk. I do it myself, but I'm typically busy in the back office, making sure the whole thing doesn't fall to bankruptcy. That's why Francine loves filling in. She's a people person. She loves helping out in a pinch. I'm not a people person, as you've likely gathered. That's not to say you're alone out here. I'm in your corner, at least. If things go south, just tap me for advice on what to do. You got a phone? Well, of course. Gavin quickly passes me his business card. He apparently had a stack of them at a ready in his pocket. Go figure. His phone number is listed at the bottom. You ever work in high pressure customer service job before? Shoe sales. Smelly socks. You have no idea. Right, well, you know how to keep your head when a customer doesn't, I hope. But anything goes sideways, you text me. I'm not around, you text Ashley. Or Naomi. In that order. Who and who? You'll meet them soon enough. I think not. Above all, do not bug Francine. She's practically retired. Let her enjoy that retirement and peace. Understood? Relax, I got this. Stress feeds me, makes me strong. This isn't my first pony ride. You can rely on me. 911 for huge emergencies, right? Oh, you can rely on me. It's not my first explosive ordnance test. I've worked retail and food service, and I've worked as a lifeguard at a pool. Managing stress and difficult situations, even life or death ones, is something I've got experience in. You can rely on me. Gavin nods approvingly. Indeed. Good, I like to hear that. 
If you can handle yourself and exercise good judgment, you'll last a hell of a lot longer than the last guy you sat there. If you stay clear and honest with me, do your work, do it well, we'll get along swimming. Nice. I have enough problems keeping this magical arc of hopes and wishes afloat. Please, don't add to my problems. What is it with hopes and wishes in this game? Magical arc of what now? Given size again. Stress release gesture. But his expression softens somewhat afterwards. I take it Francine told you her theory. That this is more than just a job. More than just an arcade. That's my understanding. <sighs> I'm not into dressing up words. I like to speak plain. If I'm curt, then that's because optimization is a factor of my job. Everybody working here wants to work here. This is where they belong, for one reason or another. Me, I love chaos. I love wrangling chaos specifically. The arcade industry is high risk, high reward. I manage that risk so that they can also find happiness in their lives. Everybody in this business has a dream they're chasing. It's a fragile thing, prone to getting crushed by hard reality. My job is to see to it that never happens. That includes Francine, who deserves better in her twilight years than desperately propping up a semi-failing business. So, you find some value in this place beyond your salary, or you'll burn out. Trust me. Last guy to sit there burned out hard. Now, can I trust you to mesh with our merry mistress? I'm still trying to figure out my why. Why so aggressive? I just got started here. No problem at all, I'm a model employee. Still trying to figure out my why. To be honest, I'm still sorting out why I'm here. What my dream is. But I'm not here to step on anyone's dream in the process. I'm here to do my best and support everyone. Good to hear. I'd say we share similar views then. It'll be a pleasure to work with someone who's actually enthusiastic and competent. And hopefully, this hive of weirdness will help you find your dream along the way. Um... Anyway, I need to go prepare your paperwork. Technically, you shouldn't be walking until we cross the I's and dotted the T's, but... But since I'm already sitting here, you'd rather I stick around? That would be accurate. If you're willing to fudge things a bit and work today anyway, it'd help us a lot. Now, if you don't mind, Nomi likely could use a hand in a workshop. A good opportunity to introduce yourself as well. Got it. Wait, someone else is here? I haven't seen anyone else. Yeah, that sounds like Naomi. Look up through the door there. The one next to the UFO catcher. Crane game, to use layman terms. Satisfied for now, given heads in the back. Presumably to the office to go crunch some numbers. If Francine's really taking a nap back there, I hope he's going to crunch quietly. My first co-worker ended up slightly less cool of a guy than I thought he'd be. But he's not a jerk, definitely. I get where he's coming from. Plus, I've known really blonde people before. It's easy to mistake them for jerks, especially at first glance. I feel I can give this guy an honest chance. Anyway, should go meet my next co-worker, this Naomi that he mentioned. Although, but swear Francine and I were the only ones here until now. A double door, also marked employees only, also with an apostrophe, leads from the arcade floor to what feels like an industrial area of some sort. I turn the handle and step inside. In a little room tucked away between the back offices and the funplex front, I find what is very likely this Naomi, spoken only of in myth and legend. A girl about my age, but certainly not my height, is tinkering away on what looks like an old tube-style monitor. Huh, didn't realize I had so many circuits. She doesn't notice me when I come in, too busy soldering a capacitor into place. The lingering smell of melting metals fills the air of the poorly ventilated workshop. Uh, excuse me? For lack of a better way to interrupt her. I was worried no matter what I did, she might, I don't know, burn her fingers or jump so high she hit the ceiling or something. Fortunately, the shock's not quite that intense. Ah. Ah. Oh, um, hello? Hey, uh, you know this room is for employees only. She said with no apostrophe. Are, are you lost? D do you need something? I'm Connor Cappuccino. I'm the new floor attendant starting today. <gasps> oh! Hi. <laughs> I didn't realize Francine already found someone. <laughs> She's cute. I guess I forgot to check my texts. <laughs> uh, oh, whoops. <laughs> she spares a glance at her phone on the nearby workbench where a huge stack of green notification messages lie in wait. <laughs> um... 
one thought comes to mind on actually seeing her. No wonder I didn't notice her until now, she was totally focused on the task at hand. I always assumed retro arcade nerds were fat middle-aged guys. What? Why? Oh my god, she's so cute! I just want to hug her, but that would be super inappropriate. Correct answer. I am but a weak willed human being, one who grew up feeling mighty funny whenever I saw Velma from Scooby-Doo. Nerds need love too, you know? And when I was moved from school to school, a social outcast, I was drawn to fellow outcasts in turn. Still, beyond my weird libido, mostly I notice how much she's smiling as she wills that little thing onto that bigger thing. She's just so happy and at peace. And I can appreciate that joy in one's nerdy passions. Anyway, I'm Naomi Fairchild, the Fun Flex's techie! Hi! <laughs> Pleased to meet you. I was expecting Gavin, though. He usually checks up on me about now. He's busy doing strange things with numbers. Ugh. Yeah, that sounds like Gavin. I take it he sent you along to help? Great! Uh, give me a hand with this monitor. It's really heavy, and I'm still paranoid about dropping it after what happened last time. Really? What happened last time? Oh, well, I I dropped it. Great story. She helps me lift the large cathode ray tube, slotting the heavy metal framework into place within the exposed guts of the nearby arcade cabinet. Once done, she starts hooking wires back up to the other wires. There's a surprising number of green circuit boards in that large hollow wooden shell. This is the first time I've seen inside one of those things. It's weird. Lots of empty space, a couple of large slabs of circuits, and that beefy monitor. Why is it so empty in there? Maybe we could fill it with nacho dip. It's my first time seeing the guts of the game. Why is it so empty in there? Why is it so empty in there? Seems inefficient. Couldn't you pack more games into the arcade if it was more compact? Not really. It's more about the footprint on the floor than the vertical height. Naomi keeps working, using a pocket multimeter to check various connections as she speaks. Let me explain. I mean, compare American to Japanese cabinets. Ours are designed for standing players, so they have to be upright, even if that means an empty base. The Japanese candy caps are shorter, so you play sitting down, but I prefer American style. Ours have more room for art. She closes up the rear access panel, closing it with one of the many keys on the key ring at her side, then steps back to admire her handiwork. There's genuine joy in that smile, not just at a job well done, but at looking at the whole thing, like it's a fine sculpture. Beautiful. Oh, I love the classic midway style. Look at those sharp angles, the side art decals, the bold font on the marquee, the bezel artwork. The what on the what and the what artwork? Wazai Naomi points out key features to me. That strip across the top of the game title? That's the marquee. The artwork that wraps around the monitor? That's the bezel. I mean, you see it too, right? How beautiful and cohesive it all is? Working in harmony to give this game its own unique feel, its own experience? As for me, well, a bunch of weird-looking boxes in a row look ugly. I agree, it's beautiful in its own way. So you are a resident game historian then, and it's beautiful in its own way. The way she stares lovingly at this, well, honestly, this box of wood and circuits and vacuum tubes and stuff. I think I understand. It was made to be one whole thing. The art, the style, and of course the game itself. All of it is part of the same experience. Everything about this game is the game. If you run it on an emulator or on a game console instead, it's made lesser. Yeah, I guess. I can see it. It's beautiful in its own way. Oh my god! Naomi lights up with joy like a pinball machine, all twinkly and shiny. <laughs> Finally! So few people really understand the beauty of a classic arcade game. Having someone I can talk to about this stuff is going to be great! Especially with a joke like Gavin running the numbers. Gavin? What's wrong with Gavin? Uh, I, I don't know. <sighs> okay, well, don't get me wrong. I can get along with him, generally. This whole attitude just... Oh. Ugh. All he really cares about is money. He keeps the arcade running, yeah, but... I just know, if he had his way, he'd get the whole place. If anybody's gonna ruin the funplex, it's him. Mark my words, it's inevitable. That doesn't sound right. He seemed easy enough to get along with, and what's more... Gavin gave me the old speech about protecting their dreams. This looks like a pretty sore point here. A long-standing argument that the new person here really shouldn't get involved with. And yet, I am involved, aren't I? I have to work with both Naomi and Gavin. 
So, I'm not sure I should prod at it, but I kind of want to know too. Don't rock the boat. Clear the air and find out more. Let her keep talking. I'm gonna let her keep talking. Uh, I just got so mad thinking about what evil money-minded schemes he's probably cooking up. No. No, no, not getting worked up. Besides, it's not right of me to dump all this worthless gossip right on the head of the newbie. You seem like a good person. And you love arcade games like I do. Right. Let's get back to work, shall we? Now for the less fun part. You seem a strong, strapping kind of person. Well, a strong person, at least. <laughs> well, you're your person that. That's enough. Um, semi unsolved then? Okay, let's get to it. Right, a little left now. My left. My left. You're right. Careful. Now forward. Right. Correct. I mean, not right to the right. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. And... There. Careful. Careful. Give it into place. Victory. I gently eased the rolling dolly forward. A giant wooden box slotting into place alongside its neighbors. The two-wheeled dolly makes it easier, but hardly easy. Especially with Nomi fretting over her baby, getting scratched or worse, falling over. But with the work done, she's all smiles again. Yeah! Okay, glad to be done with that one. I swear, I've been working on that monitor for ages. Those tubes are finicky as heck. And I'm still not totally satisfied with the flyback, but... Well, thanks for helping me out, Connor. I think you're gonna do just great here. Happy to... Oh, right. Stomach growling. Good required. Except... I wasn't expecting to actually be working today. I forgot to pack a lunch. When you have pizza on a bagel... Oh my god. Now, I'm just talking here, but if you had a pizza on a bagel... Sure. Hey, so, any good restaurants in walking distance? I think the bookstore next door sells donuts and stuff, but... Oh, um, no, not really, unfortunately. I mean, there's a cheaper Wopsup sandwich place, but even if the stuff is super tasty, you don't want to go there. You need to eat healthy. Hey, I know. Wait right here. And she's off. She's going back to her hidey hole. And she's back. She's going from her hidey hole. Lunch time! Here you go! She presses a box lunch into my hands. It's a bento box! I learned how to make them from my mom, who learned from her mom back when they lived in Japan. Oh, nice. Rice and pickles and all sorts of good healthy things. So I'm just eating your lunch. Wait, you're giving me your lunch. Sure, why not? And yet, when I first walked in as a stranger, she looked super uncomfortable with me. That escalated quickly. Um, what do you have for lunch then? Oh, I can just get some nachos from the vending machine or go hit the whole story next door. I've got a book delivery to pick up anyway. But you just said eating healthy was important? See ya! See ya after lunch! I can't help but think she was just looking for an excuse to go get some junk food instead. Naomi definitely reminds me of some of the friends I made back in school. A little weird, a little obsessive about things, but charmingly so. We seem to think alike in a lot of ways. I think we'll get along just fine. But am I silly to hold out hope for, I don't know, more? Nope, we're gonna date her. Ugh, first day on job, Connor, get your head on straight. Never straight. And yet she did give me her lunch. Me, a total stranger. Gotta be something there, right? So... A bento box. I've only seen these in anime. It's cute and hopefully has plenty of calories too. Armed with a box of healthy food, I retire to the employee lounge to get my munch on. The room where I had my bizarre job interview will suffice for food times. It's not much. A few folding chairs and a kitchenette, but will do. I suddenly famished by this point. I have a seat and unpack my alone lunch. What the? What the fuck? The fuck? Seriously, what the fuck? Why do we have a mascot, and why do we have a mascot, and why are your eyes on the side, and why is any of this happening? Why? Incoherent streaming. Coherent streaming. 
a white death. Just incoherent screaming. With my mind and body screaming wildly, my paralyzed form is unable to move from the vision of terror before me. The half-person, half-animal waves their appendages in front of me, likely closing in for a kill. Waking nightmare. Hello, anyone in there? Oh, she's cute. All, all the girls are cute. See? Nothing to be afraid of. Okay, guys, this was it for part two. We met some of our love interests and realized our job may suck a little bit, but maybe it will get better. If you want to see what happens next, like this video, subscribe, tell me what other queer games I should play. And see you next time. Bye.